Hi, my name is Vanessa and I'm here with the outgoing president of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Eriola Morenki. And today we are getting up close and personal with him. Hi, my name is Vanessa and I am here with the outgoing president of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Eriola Morenki. And today we are getting up close and personal with him. So, hi Eri. Hi. It's it been an amazing year and a half and I just want to start this off by asking you to tell us about yourself then. Who is Eri? Alright, so like I said, I'm Eri Marian KG, Outgoing President, Mechanical Engineering. Um, I'm from a very small family of five, first child of three. Um, did my secondary school. It's interesting to see that because I did that here in UI at the International School of did seven years of hard work here in UI um, and there's not really much that's interesting about <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's that's very that's very mm. so Eri has been in UI for all of his life most of my life yeah most of, his life. of my life yeah you said you went to ISI mm -hmm. what was your favorite subject while you were there um, I think the answer is the same as everybody else's answer it's math especially for that math. So that was like my best subject in secondary school. Math wasn't my best subject, so it's not everybody's answer just to like, Maybe in yeah. Speaking of math, why engineering? Did you have anything to do with the mathematics or why engineering? Um, so I've, I was a very weird child. I'm, I'm not weird anymore, obviously. Um, so I, very early on, I, was, I, was, I wanted to be an astronaut very crazy, right? For a very long time, that's all I wanted to be. So um, in secondary school, I had a few things I was really good at. So I was really good at math, physics. I was also really good at biology. And the funny thing is my mom is a zoologist. So it was two things. It was either I was going to be an engineer or a doctor. Um, I don't know. I just found that I was really interested in creating things with my hands. and. I felt like I had the skills or I had the gifts necessary to, you know, create in that way. So that's, it just made choosing engineering very easy for me. Mm. That's great to hear. I remember in your third year, you made a presentation in Trenchard Hall. And I just want to know, like, what spread that? What, well, anybody who is in your department knows who you are, obviously. So seeing you create things and actually be an engineer, it's not it's not out of place. But your department isn't known for being very welcoming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. How so? How do you mean? For legal reasons and because I still want to graduate, I cannot answer that question. No problem. Anyway, what's your favorite course? Like you've been here for five years plus. You should have a favorite, I guess. Um I actually have a few. Because I like school a lot. Um, I really like the material science in 300 level. Dr. GJ took the course, I think he's a professor now. Um, I like the course because of Dr. GJ. He was a very, very fantastic lecturer. But I also really liked all my design courses. I think I did really well in all of them. Uh, design is just something I've always liked. So when I did my design courses, I just felt at home. So yeah, those are the two courses that I feel like I really. You mentioned earlier that you went to ISA. Why did you now choose to go to the University of Ibadan? Why not Lagos or somewhere else? Hmm. So um, I like to say this thing a lot that I didn't choose UI, like UI chose me. It's nonsense, but um, when I was about to you know, start applying to schools, I had options when I finished secondary school, right? You can do your university here or you know, write some exam with the SATs or something like that. Go abroad. But um, my parents were very keen on ensuring that I get an education here first, right? Do my first degree here, then do whatever I want to do anywhere else. So I didn't really have a choice. I mean, I said I, I went to ISI here in UI. UI was like the default answer. My mom is uh, a lecturer at the Department of Zoology, so I'd say my parents weighed in very heavily on that decision. 
yeah, that's why I'm here. You heard it from him. He didn't choose UI, UI chose him. Seeing as UI chose you, what was your best experience as a student in the school? Um, I'm very fortunate because I feel like I've had so many fantastic experiences in the school. So I'll just mention two. So I'll mention one academic experience that was really good and one non-academic one. So academic, I think the best experience I had was my um, algebra exam in 100 level. I think that's the first and only exam I've written in the school that I left knowing that there's no way this lecturer is not going to be 100 percent in this exam. So it was just that good, right? And then my best non-academic experience was in um, 300 level. So I founded this club, um, it was called Hive, Robotics and Artificial Intelligence um, Club. So we won the third edition of the Professor Ayodele Award of the Design Competition, you know, at last PDC 3.0. So that was a very fantastic experience as well at the time. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I like to start with good news first. So now that I've asked you your best experience, I want to know your worst experience. Funny enough, that's also in 300 level. Um, there were two courses I did in that level that were very, very interesting. But the worst one, I think the worst course I've ever done in the school was on tail course in 300 level. I don't know the exact course code. 334? Uh, yeah, I think that's the one, the one about transformers and everything. Um, it didn't help that I was sick like for like half the classes, so I wasn't really paying attention in class, but the exam wasn't really good. So that was my worst experience in the school. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, it's bad news. So during your entire student experience here, what were your goals when you were studying with Canco Engineering? Like, was there a company you wanted to work for? Was there something you had in mind when you started? Hmm. And is it still what you have in mind? Mm. So, um, I think I will answer, I would say like what exactly brought me here to mechanical engineering or wall engineering um, field. So, like I've said before, like I feel like every um, event in my life has led me towards engineering, right? But the turning point or the thing that established mechanical engineering as the Feels that I was, I felt like I was destined to go to, to was um, funny, funny enough, it was Tony Stark, Iron Man, Avengers. So um, I feel like many other people shared the same experience, but when I was in secondary school, I recall the first time I went to the cinema to watch one of these Marvel movies, and I just saw Tony Stark. I, do, I don't know how, I, I just felt really good watching him. So I, I, I just made up my mind after that movie that um, I want to spend my life building things with my hands. I want to make, you know, obscene amounts of money building those things. And then, you know, I want all the girls to well. <laughs> So, um, yeah, and you know, it was, so I just felt it was easy to make mechanical engineering. So I think that's what, um, was there something you said? You mentioned something else in that question, I think. Are you still on that path? Like, are there, is there any dream company now? Oh yeah, yeah. So if you ask me this question, like, Four or five years ago, I've listed like five, ten companies that I was interested in work, working at. But um, that um, list has narrowed down now. So um, when I entered UI, I was very, very keen on you know, robotics, artificial intelligence, deep tech, all of those things. But then turned a little when I started doing mechanical engineering courses, you start doing fluid, mechanics, thermal. And then you think it's going to change at some point, but it remains the same till your fifth year. So. Um, Personally, I stayed the course, I stayed on that path, and I continued pursuing um, robotics ATC. So one company I'm very, very interested in now is Boston Dynamics um, in the US. So they're the makers of the Atlas robot, Spot robot. I don't know if you know that. I sound like a nerd. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, so that's, that's one of the companies that I'm really interested in now. Hmm. Watch out for Harry. If you're seeing him in Boston anytime soon, don't be surprised. <laughs> You've been here for a while. What challenges did you encounter like while you were still an undergraduate? How did you overcome them? Like, did you ever feel like dropping out? Um, yes, um, but I'd say the biggest challenge I faced as a student, especially in mechanical engineering, was uh, balance, right? So, you know, I've said all these interesting things that I was also um, 
interested in. Um, so the question was, how do you balance academics and these, um, what I say, extracurriculars, right? Um, I knew it was, okay, so in my 100 level, I was a book guy, you know, completely focused on academics and all those things. And it paid off, right? 200 level, I was most, more or less the same thing, but 300 level, I started to branch out, um, touch other things. So it became very important for me to be able to balance those things. Now, the question for me was, how do you excel very well in both areas, right? So balance was, and is still the biggest problem that I've had to face, especially even now in my final year that I had to be president as well as do other things like my final year project and things like that. So how did I um, solve the problem of balance? Three things. Um, you have to learn how to manage your time really well. So I hear, or I've heard that one of the reasons why schools like MIT, Stanford are very hard to go to is because um, there's just a lot to do, right? So it's not that you are not smart in these schools, it's just that how do you keep doing all these things and excelling at all these things, right? So I put it to you that um, if you go to this school, Mechanical Engineering UI, you're going through the same hell you probably go to, through if you went there. So learning how to balance your time, or sorry, manage your time is very important. You have to say, I'm going to do this this particular time, right? And um, second thing is discipline, right? Um, you need to know what to cut back on, right? So I had to cut back on many things um, throughout the years and um, I had to let go of some things, make very huge sacrifices during some years to focus on something. And then the last thing is the grace of God, <laughs> because you can manage your time well, you can be as disciplined as, I don't know, Keto, and you know, you can do one course and the lecturer is just giving everybody 69, 70, 69, 70, 69. And then when it gets to your turn, it gives you 69. Yeah. 70 is four points. So you need to have those three things to you know, solve problem and balance, that's what I think. Yeah. You heard it from Mary himself. Discipline, time management, and God's grace. So you mentioned how you're interested in robotics and how, well, studying mechanical engineering wasn't exactly about robotics, but you still seem to excel. So how did you manage that? How did you update yourself like in the advance of mechanical engineering? Because I know that robotics related to it so. Mm -hmm. so at first it was just um you know what anyone would do like go to youtube interesting robotics i just watch as many videos as possible but then my and then you take courses and things like that while you're doing school but then um i think in my fourth year i started to really find research areas that were that spoke to me i guess right so I started to follow particular labs that were working on these research areas, right? And then started to read their papers. So um, that's, I feel like that's the best way to get very direct, very raw knowledge on whatever it is you're very interested in. And then besides that, I've just managed to, to turn like every source of information to me into like an avenue for updating myself um, about what is happening in the world. So, if it's news, for instance, you know, um, most people are reading the news to know, like I, I really read Nigerian news, I'm mostly reading what's happening in America, like with Republicans and all those things, but um, instead of focusing on those things, I try to extract, you know, what's happening in the defense industry in this particular country or that particular country, because I like defense, right? Or what's happening in health, ETC. Right, so I just feel generally, you know, news, social media, all those things, I, I just try to, extract as much knowledge as I can from them. Mm -hmm. Knowledge that is specific to you know what I'm interested in as an engineer. Yeah. You spoke about the research areas that you were following up on. Can you like give a specific example of the one you found particularly exciting? Um one particular research area that I'm very and I've been following for a very long time now is biomimetic robotics. So a very simple, a biomimetic robot is just basically a robot that mimics something you find in nature. Right? So if you I'm sure you've seen videos of robotic insects and dogs or cheetahs and things like that. So that's one field that I'm very interested in. In fact, my final year project was um, biomimetic robot, right? 
So I mentioned labs. There's one lab that I've been following very closely. That's the MIT Biomimetics Laboratory. I think that's what it's called. Um, so I'm not going to go full on nerd and <laughs> start saying all sorts of things, but yeah. Well, I can't ignore that you've been very educated. I, I think I've learned a lot so far. I don't think I've ever heard of biomimetics. <laughs> you mentioned your final year project, which reminded me that you are still the president since you haven't officially handed over. Yep. So what made you run for president? Why Naimeki you are a president? Like, what do you love about it? Hmm. You want me to answer what I love about Naimeki UI? Why I ran for president? One after the other, please. Okay, so... Um... Let me start with why I ran for president. So I felt like um, I felt like there was an opportunity to radically like transform the entire department, the entire association. Um, before I became president, I, I mean, mechanical engineering has, has always been the standard to emulate in the Faculty of Technology, right? Um, but I felt like we had the opportunity to actually turn mechanical engineering into the standard to emulate in the University of Ibadan, right? So I felt like there were, I had a few ideas, things that I felt like were low hanging fruit that we could just execute and, you know, turn the department around instantly, right? Then I felt like we were, um, how do I put this? We had gotten a bit comfortable. I felt like we needed to start innovating on many fronts, right? Doing many very interesting things that nobody would even think about. That was one. Um, then two, um, one of the reasons, in fact, from my very first year, I always felt like in the end I would do something like this, right? The long line of people that have led before me are some of the best men that I know, right? So my first year, um, Sydney Okorafor was president, right? And um, I had a very close relationship with him. In fact, I've had very close relationships with all of them, all the past presidents of this department. So I guess you can see that I just felt inspired by, you know, the quality of men that have led this department in the past to, you know, to emulate them and, you know, um, you know, join their ranks or something, <laughs> right? So that was another reason why I, I um, became president. Then I want to touch on, you know, I said something about making um, Namek UI the standard template in the UI, right? One funny thing I found was, uh, you know our, our shirts, I'm sure you've seen our shirts around the faculty, right? The, the goal for um, our shirt designs this year was, how do we create shirts that are not, you know, your regular association shirts, you know, you see your logo and it's, it's fine, but you can only wear it to its club. How do you turn those shirts into, you know, like streetwear, something anybody anywhere can buy, right? One interesting thing I found, on campuses, I've seen people that I've never seen before in my life, people that don't go to Mech, wear our shirts on campus. So that's a big win. So I feel like we have on some level accomplished that goal of getting Namek I mean, UI beyond just being, you know, local champions to being you know, the champions of UI. <laughs> yeah. I asked previously, what do you love about Namek I mean, UI? Right. So um, I don't see people in Nimeki UI as students or comrades, you know, I see them as family. And maybe if you're editing this video, you can put the fast and furious, uh, <laughs> you know, family, right? Um, I think everybody in this department, I, I see everybody as like my brother or my sister. You know, every, of, of course, I'm like everybody's older brother and also they're all my younger brothers and sisters. But, you know, when I was still in 100 to 100, I used to see all of them as like, older brothers and sisters, right? Um, that bond that we share is something that I don't feel like I've shared with any other association at all, right? We share everything together, we learn together, we go together where we hold our necks, you know? We, we, we're just very interested in, you know, ensuring that every single person is carried along, every single person, you know, grows as well. So that's one thing I really love about NMQ and I really hope that that stays uh, till the end of time that we maintain that bond. Then another thing that I really love about Nimec UI is that, I'll say this anywhere, the quality of people you will find in Mechanical Engineering University of Ibadan, you will be hard pressed to find those kind of people anywhere else in Nigeria. Dare I say that there is no Department of Mechanical Engineering in Nigeria that has people like the people in Nimec UI, right? There are so many intelligent people in this. In this. In fact, that makes the job of leading them very hard, right? Because everybody has their own ideas, everybody has criticisms, everybody's just very intelligent. So it's a very 
it's a very 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 competitive environment right and then um you have people that are very driven right they can do anything so um when we started you know i'll start my example right we had like maybe 50 people in my class or 40 something people they wanted to be engineers in 100 level um so you know they started facing all those challenges like you know unmet expectations and all those things they didn't give up and you know just were like ah you know i've made a mistake they started to you will find people in data science data analytics all so software engineering and i'm not just talking about people that do these things as a hobby i'm talking about people that really excel in this field to so find them here so those are the two things i really love about namik here and the fact that we are one big family and the fact that we are the best of the best basically you're all excellent people